Hello and welcome to the conference The Spanish Mystics, St. John of the Cross and St. Teresa of Avila Exiting the Framework of Time in the Mystical Experience My name is Rick Serrano and I am representing the IKL International Kunstverein in Luxembourg Today is Thursday the 31st of March 2022 and it is my privilege to guide you tonight through this presentation First of all, let me start by thanking the Spanish Embassy, specifically Mrs. Amparo Cerejo Álvarez, for all the logistic support and, of course, the Ambassador, His Excellency Bernardo de Sicard Escola, who very generously is hosting us tonight. So, as you know, the IKL has organized this series of conferences called La Filosofía Portus, we have so far already delivered four conferences and today we have the fifth one of them, uh, the Spanish mystics, and then next month we will have Taoism. So this is a series of conferences that many of you have been following. We thank you for your interest and for your support to the IKL. So as always, let me start by reminding the three goals that we have with these conferences and the one big important disclaimer. So the goals are, first of all, to bring you closer to philosophy. That's our idea, that's our aim. To show you why it is important and relevant in your lives. And also the big disclaimer is that this is not an academic presentation. That's very important to say. It does not contain the academic rigor that a formal lecture would imply. And this takes me to our goal. The big goal here is to transmit you our passion for philosophy. So hopefully, if by the end of the session tonight you have uh, received a little bit of that passion for philosophy, then our goal, our main goal has been achieved. So with that, let me thank you once again for being here tonight with us. And let me tell you that the conference, uh, which is called Exiting the Framework of Time in the Mystical Experience, St. John of the Cross, St. Teresa of Avila. Well, let me start by telling you that this is indeed a very ambitious presentation, I realize uh, of this. And I would like to uh, tell you that, of course, to talk uh, sufficiently uh, about any of these uh, characters would require a full course. Uh, you could actually study a full master's or full PhD on each and every one of them. Of course, to make a lecture in 50 minutes of this is quite complex, quite complicated. So I will not be talking about everything, of course, uh, about these two mystics, but I will be concentrating on one very specific uh, problem, let's say one very specific topic. Uh, I will get to that. But before we start focusing into the detail, let me give you some general uh, elements about them. So first of all, some bio biographical information about Santa Teresa. So uh, Teresa de Avila was uh, born in 1515 and died in 1582. Uh, she was born in Avila and she died in Alba de Tormes in Salamanca. She is a, a mystic, a reformer, a theologian. She is one of the doctors of the church. She was a discalced Carmelite nun and she is a very famous poet, writer, and also teacher. So this is like some mini biographical information about her. Uh, uh, the main books that she wrote, she wrote a lot, like a lot. But uh, among the most distinguished pieces, we, we can find the interior castles, the mansion, the way of perfection, of course, her autobiography, meditations on songs of songs, and relationships. Those are the, some of the most famous. On the other side, we have St. John of the Cross, 1542-1591, Fontiveros Úbeda, that means he was born in the Avila region and he died in the Jaén region. He was a Carmelite friar. He was very active in part of the Counter-Reformation. He's also a doctor of the church a priest, a poet, and a mystic, and he was canonized by Benedicto uh, the 13th in 1726. Uh, among his main and most uh, famous uh, publications, uh, St. John of the Cross wrote Dark Night of the Soul, of course, a classical classical, 
the spiritual canticle ascent of Mount Carmel, live in the flame of love, saints of light and love, and many other. He also produced a lot, as, as you can see in, in these couple of books. Now, let me start by, although this is a, a conference on philosophy, it is very linked to poetry, and so I'm going to drive you quickly through some of the pieces of their poetry just to get you into the mood. I just want to get you into the mood of the mystics, of these great poets and these great mystics. Let me start by I Would Cease to Be by Saint Teresa of Avila. Let me share with you this beautiful piece. I Would Cease to Be. God dissolved my mind, my separation. I cannot describe my intimacy with him. How dependent is your body's life on water and food and air? I said to God, I will always be unless you cease to be. And my beloved replied, and I would cease to be if you die. Beautiful. Uh, also from Santa Teresa, Christ has no body. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. No hands but yours, no feet but yours. Yours are the eyes through which is to look out. Christ's compassion to the world. Yours are the feet with which he is to go about doing good. Yours are the hands with which he is blessed men now. Now, on the side of St. John of the Cross, let me share with you, I live yet do not live in me. I live yet do not live in me, and one waiting as my life goes by, and die because I do not die. I longer do I live in me, and without God I cannot live. To him or me, I cannot give myself. So what can the living be? A thousand deaths, my agony, awaiting as my life goes, dying because I do not die. The Dark Knight, also a very famous point, The Dark Knight. And of course, this is just a, a tiny extract. Let me read it to you. The Dark Knight. In darkness and secure, by the secret ladder disguised, Ah, the sheer grace, in darkness and concealment, my house being now all still. On that glad night in secret, for no one saw me, nor did I look at anything with no other light or guide than the one that burned in my heart. From the living flame of love. O oh, living flame of love, that tenderly wounds my soul in its deepest center, since now you are not oppressive, now consummate. If it be your will, tear through the veil of this sweet encounter. So the reason I bring you these poems here is because I want you to get into the mood of the mystical experience. So, you know, the poetry is of course deep and beautiful, but what I want you to focus is on the mystical experience that they very nicely describe or try to describe in their words. So where do we focus tonight beyond poetry and beyond philosophy? We will be, as I said, this is a very ambitious presentation, we will be focusing on the concept of time. For me, the most fascinating thing about the mystics is not only the beauty of their poetry, but the fascinating concept of time. What happens to time? inside the mystical experience. Now let me right away start by telling you my hypothesis. So my hypothesis is that in the mystical experience, as laid by Saint John of the Cross and Saint Teresa of Avila, basically time stops. Yeah, that's right. So this is a focus of the chat tonight. Time stops within the mystical experience. Now for this, uh, we have to first talk about a big, big problem, a big, big question of all times in philosophy, and that is, what is time? So what is time? That's a question. And let me tell you how I would like to address this big question of philosophy with you tonight in the context of the mystics. So to answer the question, what is time? Of course, I am not going to give my opinion because that would be super poor. I am going to call on the biggest philosophers to share with us what the heck is time and try to understand what is this thing called time. I'm going to invite five philosophers tonight here. So I'm going to invite Aristotle, St. Augustine, Kant, 
Husserl, Heidegger. And I will be giving you just quickly five elements of their own definitions of what time is. And then I will cross that with the mystical experience of St. John of the Cross and St. Therese of Avila. And I will be concluding by giving you five, what I call five summit points of that mystical experience. So let's get started. What is time? That's the question we are addressing. What is time for Aristotle? So first of all, let's start. So Aristotle is going to say time frames us. Time wraps us. Time is something somehow connected with movement. So time is not movement, Aristotle is going to say. He's going to clarify it very, very, very loud and clear. Time is not movement, but it's something connected with movement. Definitely, we can understand time in, in a sense as, as we understand movement. That's the first thing that he's going to say. But he, take, take a look also to the fact that he says, Time frames us, time wraps us. Okay. Now he's going to say also time as a connector of a before and an after. So time is the instant, it's a vertex. But take care, he says time is a line, time is not a point. Time is a continuum, a connector before, the, before and after. So just imagine this, like this tunnel that you see here is a connector. Now Aristotle is also going to say, what are what things are there in time what is to be in time he's going to ask himself huh? remember that in philosophy it is always very important the use of prepositions the preposition in frequently presents a philosophical problem so when we say we are in time well what is the meaning of that in preposition right and just like this photograph the net that is suddenly broken. You see here this iron net that is broken in the middle. That's because, well, what is it to say that we are in time? What is the transcendence of that to be in time? Well, Aristotle is also going to say, well, you know, the soul does not seem to depend on time. And he's going to say, well, what can be named about time? Can we name anything about time? Can we say anything about time? He poses that question. Anyway, Aristotle, to conclude, he's going to say definitely time as a frame that rules everything, that orders and sorts everything. Time has been previously established. So the question is, where are we in that framework of time? And I, I really like this photograph, and that is why it's the cover of the presentation, because it's like a, like a frame, like a tunnel, like a deep moving thing where we are inserted so what is time this is the question that we're addressing this is a very fundamental question i would like to invite you to think this now let's move to saint augustine now saint augustine is going to say well you know it's very difficult to talk about time because when we talk about time when we think about time we can actually break it down into three parts the present of course the past and the future but he says, you know, I have a problem with this thing because the past, actually, the past has already been. So we're trying to answer the question, what is time? Okay, so in the present tense, what is time? But when we try to answer that question, the past has already been here. The future, because it is future, really never comes. It is in the future. So it seems to me that the only thing that matters is the present. How do I capture the present if it is just like, a, like an instant between the past and the future? So he's going to introduce this concept of distensio. And take a look at the photograph. It's like this ladder that goes and goes on. So the present is going to distend itself. It's like, a, you know, it's going to elongate. It's going to be, be a distensio. And that's what he's going to say, first of all. Time has a difficulty connecting to its narrative, St. Augustine is going to say but a possibility of understanding what it is. So we can understand when we talk about, I will meet you tomorrow at 12, you do have a sense of, uh, you can of course understand what that means. But if I tell you what is time, you have a much bigger difficulty in clarifying what time is, right? Although you can say, I'm going to go um, in two weeks time, I'm going to go for a week, uh, on holidays for Easter. That you can understand. But if I tell you, can you please explain me what time is, then that's a different thing, right? 
So, in any case, St. Augustine is going to be fascinated by the fugacity of time. Time is something that escapes my hands. It's like memory and awaiting are two fundamental factors because, you know, for the past, I need my memory. And for the future, I have like this feeling of awaiting. He calls this in Latin preterita and futura. So the concepts of uh, the, the time that has passed and the future that will come. Now, the question again is, okay, if time exists, so where is it? Because the present, the past is definitely not here anymore. The future is not here anymore. And the present, well, okay, there seems to be something, but where? In any case, he's also going to say time wraps me globally, sort of like time encompasses me completely. Now, St. Augustine is also going to say, well, there's an importance of feeling the flow of time as it passes. Time is going to be flowing. And it's the importance of wishing to grab time. So I want to grab time. And that is an intention. So he's going to say, he's going to call that intentio. So the, the intention of my soul to grasp time, to hold time, to retain time. There's a very famous song uh, by, uh, by Siempre Así telling about how time flies and how time escapes and how they try to grasp it in their hands. Well, this is exactly that intentio that San Agustin was talking about. The importance of asking ourselves for the where of the past and of the future of time. In the present time, that is what matters. Uh, my spirit has a critical role, and that is the so-called distensio animi. So, again, there is an intention, there is a distension, so I try to elongate myself and capture the present moment, but it is my soul, it is my spirit that tries to do that. That is why he calls it this distensio animi that wants to grasp that time. Now, that's for St. Augustine. Now, let's take a look at Kant. So, what is Kant going to tell us? First of all, this is, of course, very Kantian. So, time is an objective framework that is independent of myself. Time is not a consequence of anything. And I bring you this photograph because I think this is very illustrative. Look at the man sitting there like in a theater stage, huge stage, and he's there, sitting there alone. Well, time is an objective framework, independent of myself. The theater doesn't care at all if I am there or not. Time is not a consequence of anything. And yet, guess what? I am in the theater. Now, of course, Kant is also going to say time is a synthetic and a, a priori knowledge. So remember uh, that Kant is going to distinguish between uh, a priori and a posteriori knowledge and synthetic uh, knowledge. Well, this is one of them. And as such, it precedes me. It's a precondition. It's like this house. Take a look at the photograph of this apartment. The apartment is already there. The walls are already there. The hole for the, for the windows and for the room. And you sort of decide where to go in that house, right? You decide where to go, where to enter. There's a big, a big discussion about how we also how we observe time, and there is going to be two tendencies. One says, you know, time can be like the flow of a river, sort of like San Agustin, the flow of a river, and you see the water passing, but you are outside the river, but you see it passing. The other perception is like the rooms in a house that you walk through. Uh, you know, the house is empty and you decide where to go and where to look into. Well, such, such a thing is what Kant is saying. It's like a precondition. It's like a, something that exists before me, independently of me. There is only one unique time. This is a beautiful definition. Take a look. Kant. There is only one unique time. It is infinite. It has no limits. It does not begin. It does not end on any point. It is linear and irreversible. So think of your life. It is linear and irreversible. Right? Isn't it fascinating? So this is a question of time. He's going to say again, time is a, an a priori condition of all phenomena. Everything is subordinated to time. 
I put this photograph because I like this steel structure that supports and holds and houses everything. Everything is subordinated to time, it's going to say can't. But this is also beautiful, fifth element. Time can only be perceived as a function of other things. So you cannot perceive time for the sake of time. You need to put it into context. You need to put it in relationship with other things. Permanence, succession, and simultaneity are going to be characteristics. But he's going to say, you need to realize that time is there. And to do that, you need to put it in other context of other things. That, that's what I, pu I put this uh, mercury balls here. You know, only when you put them in contact with other things, you can relate to time and you can grasp a little bit what time is. In German, this is called Selbstaffektion. Selbstaffektion, so the capacity to feel it in yourself, like to affect your, your being. So that is Kant. Now let's move to Husserl. Many years later, Husserl, Edmund Husserl, father of phenomenology, he's going to say, I don't care about the other concepts. Time is an experiential component, and that is what matters. The intimate consciousness of time, the intimate consciousness that I exist, that is time, that is what matters about time. What matters is the importance of the apprehensions of time that I can do or not. Whatever my consciousness perceives, what matters is my feeling, my experience. So that's why I put you this photograph here of a man there sitting there staring at the horizon. What matters is what he is feeling. So Husserl is going to say, what matters about time is what you experience. In that sense, time is going to be very different for you than for me, contrary to Kant. Now, take a look at this photograph. There, there is a pipe and the water flowing, okay? So he's going to say, time is like all the time, we're talking about the experience, experimented time, and time is going like to be falling into the past, continuously falling into the past. But there is no rupture. So it comes and flows and goes from future to present to past, and we just grasp it a little bit, but not yet. He's going to be introducing two concepts. One is sight object. So the things that I capture in time is like an object of, of time. And the yet spunk, this the right now moment where I stand in time and then immediately it's going to fall into the past. Now, Husserl is also going to say, many years before Eckhart Tolle or anybody else has said it, the importance of the now. And this is the now, but not the, na not the instant, not the instant. The now as a longitudinal intentionality. So in this sense, it's similar to St. Augustine in the sense that it has an intention and it's longitudinal. So it, it, it is not a point, but a line. Now, uh, Husserl finally is going to say, is, was, or will be change, not negative change, but change. Time is concatenated. The three parts of time, the is, the was, or the will be, are concatenated. And he is going to make reference to a concept called videre dinero. I remember over and over. I need to remember over and over so that I can connect, that I can project myself into time. This is what Husserl is going to say. And now, finally, let's move on to Heidegger that we discussed last month. So I'm sure that all of you who were with us last month at the subtitle gallery to discuss about Heidegger might remember what he said about time. Well, first of all, he said, time is a unique phenomenon of a future that having been becomes present and should be called temporality. So again, the flow of the future that has been and passes to the past Time wraps us, just like this crystal uh, artwork. No? Time has a complete reality that wraps us. Time is that the fundamental structure of the Dasein. And remember the concept of Dasein, uh, the, 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 the man in the world, the, the, the human in the world, that is there in the universe and is wrapped by time. So you are in, 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 in wrapped by time. Now, remember that what we discussed last month, so present is not the most important time. So for the first time, somebody's going to say 
the most important time is not the present moment, as many have said. Heidegger is going to say, no, the future, the future, you need to think of the future. The future is the framework of time in which you can conceive yourself. And he's going to talk about the Sorge, you might remember, the, the preoccupation, the anxiety, the angst for the death. Zum Ende sein, the human being is a, a being for, for death. And the projection of the time that you still have here in this world, that is what matters, is going to say Heidegger. Now, only the future sets possibilities, and therefore, it is the future that matters. Only in the future can you project yourself. Our worry, the Sorge, our anxiety for, de for death, is the main vector to think time. So mainly the future is going to be the axis to think about. So this is in a nutshell what time is. So we have now reviewed what time is you know, for the different philosophers. You can agree or not with some of the concepts, but these are probably the five most important philosophers who have discussed what time is. And now let me try to move to our real matter who, that is here. What is, of course, in the mystical experience, what St. John of the Cross and St. Therese of Avila are going to say about the time. Well, they're going to say many things, and I have a full analysis in case you could be interested, of course, I will be very glad to share it with you. Uh, the analysis goes argument by argument, like answering every one of the philosophers. So I have created a dialogue where San Juan will answer every one of the philosophers. Let me just give you some hints of what the experience is. Because San Juan and Santa Teresa, they're going to talk about the, the experience of the mystical experience, the mix, mystical connection with God is that moment where the human being is able to get as close as possible to God. And the hypothesis, as I told you before, is that in that very moment, time stops. So, how can we sort of demonstrate that time stops only if we go to the definition of time and then we give solid counter-arguments? So, what are the counter-arguments of St. John? To Aristotle, he's going to say, you know, there is no other framework than the infinite love. L, love with capital L, so God. There are no other references than the infinite intelligence. So, I don't care about your framework. I don't care about your reference. Because when I am inside the mystical experience, the only thing that really matters is the connection with the infinite law. That's the first argument. Now, an argument against St. Augustine. He's going to say, you know what? There is no memory. There is no expecting for any future time. Nothing wraps us other than God. I don't care to remember. I don't try to anticipate the future, as St. Augustine said. St. Augustine said, there is time because we have memory, and there is time because we can anticipate the future. And St. Juan is going to say, no, no, maybe that there is in the, in the normal world, but in the mystical experience, I could not care less about the memory, and I don't want to expect any future. I just want to be concentrated on the beloved one. I just want to be considered in God. So, of course, no space for time. To Husser and the concept of the experience of the conscious, of the inner conscious. The inner conscious is, is by Husser is called inneres bewusstsein. He's going to say, in the darkness of the night, there is no consciousness of anything. I don't want to be conscious. I want to be black. I want to be blacked out. I want to be completely immersed in the experience. I don't want to be taking conscious of anything, he's going to say to Husserl. Now, to Kant, he's going to say, there is no succession of events, no before, no after. There is only the current moment, and that moment, that moment expands indefinitely. That moment sort of eliminates both the past and the future. There is no succession. There is not that now something is going to happen. In the middle of the mystical experience, when San Juan connects with God, he cannot care less about connecting other moments. Only the present moment matters. Now, to Heidegger, this is a very important answer, to Heidegger, 
he would say, you know what, there is no sorge at all. There is no anxiety. There is no preoccupation. I don't, I, 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 God cures everything. There is no end. There is no end of the, of the line. No matters because I am with God. We cannot even talk about sorge. And we don't care about the future, nor about any other time for that matter. We just don't care about that. So these are the answers that I imagine San Juan giving them to the philosophers of our time. So over and over, basically contradicting everything of their definition of what time is. Now let's see what Santa Teresa has to say. To Aristotle and the concept of time wrapping us and the concept of time uh, um, bond bonding us, She's going to say, you know what, well, in the moradas, in the mansions, all potentialities need to be put to sleep. There should be stillness. And stillness means no movement at all. So Aristotle says time is something that has to do with movement. Well, guess what? I don't want to move. Precisely, we need the soul to be completely still. We need to be completely quiet. We need to achieve what I call the silence with a capital S. We need to be totally quiet inside. And only there do we enter the mystical experience. And there we almost touch God. So the concept of Aristotle's movement time is simply not applicable. How about St. Augustine? Well, he's, she's going to say, you know, you talk about memory once again. You talk about preterita and futura. You talk about the possibility of remembering and of anticipating. Well, guess what? Uh, the mystical experience is precisely about forgetting the whole thing, forgetting the whole, the whole past and not anticipating any future. You don't want to anticipate. You just want to be focused in that precise, eternal moment and try to make it as eternal as possible. To who search is going to say, because she, who said, remember, is going to say, Time is in, in need of your conscience. Time wants the, your experience, your own experience. And Santa Teresa is going to say, well, you know, I don't care about my own experience. I live outside myself. That's one of the points. I live outside of myself. Self-consciousness could not matter less. Now to Kant and the concept of a, prior, a priori, concept and independent of myself and so uh, Santa Teresa is going to say the only a priori is the love of God. She's going to say you are my dwelling, my home, my shelter. I don't need any other framework. I'm going to be just with God and that's only the, the only thing that matters. And then finally to Heidegger, she's going to say you know what there is no song and it becomes almost urgent that this future that separates me from my beloved one is over. So look how contradictory this is. Heidegger was saying, you need to be conscious of the time that you have from now until the moment of your death, because that gives the possibilities and then you can act and you can live and you can enjoy and you can discover and blah, blah, blah. And use that time between now and the moment of your death, basically make peace with your death, try to expand and elongate that time as much as possible. And Santa, Santa Teresa is going to say exactly the opposite, exactly the opposite. She's going to say, the time that I am separated from being with God is wasted time. I wish I could die now. I wish I could go to you now. So it's exactly the negation of that time Heidegger wanted. And the sorge, the, the anxiety, the preoccupation that Heidegger was introducing, Santa Teresa is going to say, there's no sorge, it's just full joy. So that is how I see them answering to the philosophers. Now, let me uh, to try to head towards conclusion. Let me summarize by sharing with you some of what I call the five summit points of the mystic. So what is really the mystical experience for San Juan de la Cruz? So I have created these sort of equations and uh, reading through their poems, reading through their, their writings, and I come up with 
some simple equations like this. So let me read you this and why, while I read it, I invite you to try to interiorize the concepts. So the concepts are things equal noise. Noise equals language. Language equals noise. Emptiness. Emptiness equals silence. And silence equals God. This is a mystical experience. I need to quiet the noise. I need to quiet my voice. I need to quiet my language. I need to empty my soul. I need to get and grasp that silence with capital S that will get me to God. This is what San Juan de la Cruz is going to mean. Next equation. There is the need of a sort of a willingness to do this. I search for silence, I want silence. I suppress language, I allow silence. Consciousness of elimination, consciousness of suppression. Willingness of suppression. This is very important, the willingness of suppression. So it's an active search for silence, an active conscious consciousness of the elimination of everything that I have, of suppressing everything, to bring me to that dark night, to really take me to the suppression. But I want to want it. I need to want it. Now, another point, I leave it in original language. So, porque para venir del todo al todo, has de negarte del todo en todo. Porque si quieres tener algo en todo, no tienes puro en Dios tu tesoro. So this is again the sample of the negation, complete suppression. You need to suppress everything. It's like a sort of like a black hole. You need to suppress everything in order to have what really matters, in order to really have what God is. This comes from Subira, Subira al Monte Carmel. Now, another concept. O noche que guiaste, o noche amable más que la alborada, o noche que juntaste amado con amada, amada en el amado transformada. This is also from Subida al Monte Carmelo. Again, take a look. So, you need the darkness of the night. You need a nice darkness. And that darkness will bring together the beloved one, the, 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 the two beloved ones, and then transform them. The mystical experience gets there and materializes there only and only in the darkness of the night. The night is a prerequisite for that to happen. Now, let's move on. Fifth point of San Juan de la Cruz. Aunque le hace cierto al entendimiento, no le hace claro, sino oscuro. Pone a la memoria en vacío y tiniebla. Once again, denying memory, denying anticipation, it is precisely to neutralize, to neutralize the past and the future. You only want to be there in the darkness. You require that darkness to be able to access it. Now, some five key points about Santa Teresa. Juntáis quien no tiene ser con el ser que no se acaba. Sin acabar, acabáis. Sin tener que amar, amáis. Engrandecéis nuestra nada. This is beautiful. You bring together that that is nothing with, with the being that is eternal. And you bring them together and you make big our nothingness. So once again, this is from Poesías from O Hermosura Que Excedeis. So these five lines summarize for you the mystical experience and the negation of time. Next. Another equation that I sort of invented. Emptiness, stillness. Stillness, no noise. Stillness, no thinking. Stillness, divinity. Divinity, no time. So, see how this connects. No? 
So I need to empty myself. This is going to be a, a prerequisite. You need to empty yourself. You need to arrive to full stillness. You need to arrive to a state of no noise. And in that full, deep, dark stillness, you need to suppress thinking. No thinking. And that stillness gets you close to God. Do you touch God? Not exactly, but you get as close as possible there. You go there and to be in that framework, to be in that closeness to the divinity, you need to suppress time. You exit, you effectively exit the framework of time. Third point. En olvido mi memoria. Attention. En olvido mi memoria. Mi alteza en humillación. Mi bajeza, en, en bajeza mi opinión. En afrenta mi victoria. So once again, complete denial. But very important here is the first sentence. In forgiveness my memory. You need to actively search for the resetting of your memory. You need to put it in blank. You need to go like this photograph in, the, in this picture, like you go into a door that is fully blank. You need to reset and clarify all memory that you might have. And you, of course, have no expectation of no future. You put your all your attempts to the minimum. You surrender your victory and then you access God. This comes from A la Profesión de Isabel de los Ángeles eh, en Poesías. Number four. Dichoso el corazón enamorado, quien solo en Dios ha puesto el pensamiento. Por él renuncia todo lo criado, y en él haya su gloria y su contento. This comes from Dichoso el corazón enamorado, eh, Poesías. Once again, once again. There is no sorrow here, you know, it's the joy, the enormous joy of the in love, of the heart that is in love, but that has put the love only in God and in God only, and, and that renounces, that refuses, that rejects everything that is created, and only in Him poses the glory and the joy. And finally, probably the most famous one, uh, the piece of Saint Teresa from Vivo sin vivir en mí. Vivo ya fuera de mí, después que muero de amor, porque vivo en el Señor, que me quiso para sí, cuando el corazón le di, puso él en este letrero, que muero porque no muero. That's the point, that's the most critical point. The muero porque no muero. I die because I do not die. That means... I am desperate to get as closer as possible to the divinity, as close as possible to God. And for that, I require complete denial, complete silence, complete stillness, complete darkness. And of course, let's go to the final conclusion. Now that we have seen all of this, the conclusion, of course, becomes very evident. Let's see. Definitely, in the, in the mystical experience, there is no movement. Neither there is free will. We cannot observe the flow of anything that is happening, neither from the perspective of the ship that I see passing sailing over the river, nor from the perspective of walking through the rooms of a house, deciding where to get in and where to stay out of. Free will has also been subject to suppression. It's the emptiness, complete emptiness that we are evoking. It's the black room that we're searching for, the black, empty, still room. This emptiness has generated a gradual progress. So the mystical experience is not something that happens immediately. It is a walking through the moradas, a climbing of the Mount Carmel, getting us closer and closer to the divine. We have arrived at the point of absolute silence and of permanence, also absolute. We do not get there to aim at being anywhere else. We aim at being there to be there, to be only there, fully, exclusively there. So this is not about rethinking the past or memory of the past or expecting the future. This is actually not even trying to grasp anything. It's about just trying to be there. Having said of the above, 
we conclude that in the mystical experience, basically, time stops. We exit the ruling framework of time. We caress. Even if it is only for an instant, we caress the turn. With that, I thank you very much and I will open it up now for questions and answers. I will be happy to take all your questions. And of course, let me remind you the next events that we have for Taoism on the 19th of May and then the following conferences on the second part of La Philosophie pour tous. I invite you to become a member of IKL. Leave us your contact data and we'll be glad to enroll you. And this conference is now already available on YouTube in both Spanish language and English language. You can find it on YouTube very easily. And also let me invite you to join our next event coming along on the 23rd of April at the Subtile Gallery. We will have a cantata of the uh, Dante Alighieri's Divine Comedy. Uh, we will uh, have um, Damir Babasit playing the cello and I will be reciting the verses of the first, second and third canti of the Inferno. We uh, will organize this event. Uh, it has a cost, but the profits go to Ukraine and to support the Ukraine refugees. So we will invite you to join us here at the Subtile Gallery in Bel Air. The music selection prepared by Damir is fascinating. It's basically Johann Sebastian Bach and Alexander Glasnov. Glasnov uh, I uh, wait for you there. And um, thank you very much once again. Muchas gracias. Phil Moltz, merci. Rick Serrano from International Kunstverein Luxembourg. I wish you a good night. Goodbye.